So hello everyone and welcome to tonight's Metro West Regional Community Meeting for the Bus Network Redesign Project. My name is Reagan Cecchio and I will be serving as the moderator for tonight's meeting. Next slide. I would like to note that all MBTA activities, including public meetings, are free of discrimination. The MBTA complies with all federal and state civil rights requirements preventing discrimination on the basis of race, color, national origin, limited English proficiency, and additional protected characteristics. We welcome the diversity from across our entire service area. If you have any questions or concerns, please visit mbta.com forward slash title six, that's title VI to reach the Office of Diversity and Civil Rights. Next slide. I would also like to remind everyone of the rules for participating in this meeting, as well as remind everyone that the meeting is being recorded. While we do wish we could do this meeting in person, we're hoping that we've designed an online public meeting that will be interactive and provide an opportunity for us to have a conversation together. Before we can begin that conversation, I do want to review a few technical aspects of the Zoom platform. Next slide. We have ASL interpreters tonight for the meeting. If you would like to view the ASL interpreter at all times, you should keep your video view settings in gallery mode. To pin the interpreter's video, click the ellipses in the top right corner of the video and select pin video. You will need to repeat this process each time we switch interpreters. We also have additional interpreters tonight who are translating the meeting um, into Mandarin and Spanish. We are having some technical difficulties with the Spanish language channel right now, um, but we'll make an announcement when that is available. Our apologies about that. If you require those services, please click the interpretation button on your screen, that's the globe icon, and select which language you wish to hear. In addition, we will be holding small group discussions later in the meeting. If you would like to be in a Spanish language or Mandarin language small group discussion, please message a project team member in the chat so we can move you to the appropriate discussion section at that time. At this moment, I will ask all English speakers to please select English as their chosen language. This will allow you to hear translated non-English comments during the Q&A. Next slide. You can view closed captions by clicking the closed captions feature and selecting from the option shown. Show subtitle will display a caption at the bottom of the screen. View full transcript will display the meeting's audio transcription in a window to the right. Next slide. All attendees are muted during the presentation to prevent excessive background noise. If you are viewing this meeting on a computer, toggle speaker view to see the presentation more prominently. If you are on a smartphone, swipe to change views. You may use the chat button to submit a typed question or comment at any point during the meeting. The chat is not open, but if you direct your question to ask a question, we will receive the comment and question. We will be monitoring the chat during the presentation, but ask that you hold all your substantive comments and questions for the question and answer session that we'll be, we will be having later in the breakout meetings. There will be a lot of time for comments and questions uh, tonight during the meeting. So um, we would ask that you hold that. If you are having a technical problem though, please share your issue in the chat at any point in the meeting um, and we will respond as quickly as possible. I'll note that all project team members like myself have project team listed next to their names in the participant list. 
When you submit a question, those questions will not be visible to the attendees once they are submitted, but we will try to get to as many as possible during the Q&A portion of the meeting. During the small group discussions, the chat will be visible to everyone, so we do encourage you to keep all of your comments respectful to other attendees. If you use inappropriate language, you will be removed from the meeting. Um, I would like to note at this time that the Spanish language channel is now working. So if you would like to uh, select that channel, that is now available. Apologies for the delay on that. Um, so now, without further ado, I would like to introduce uh, Kat Banesh from the MBTA, who will begin the main presentation. Kat? Great. Thank you, Reagan. Uh, good evening, everyone. My name is Kat Benish. We actually want to go to the next slide. Um, I'm the Chief of Operations Strategy, Policy, and Oversight at the MBTA, and I'm joined tonight by Rob Guptill, who is our Director of Service Planning, and our General Manager, Steve Poftak. Uh, and before I give a review of the project, I actually wanted to hand it over to our General Manager, provide some words about this project and the importance of the MBTA. Thanks so much, Kat, and thanks to everyone who's joined us uh, here tonight for this hearing. It's, it's really my pleasure to welcome all of you uh, here tonight for the launch of the brand new bus network map that's part of our broader bus network redesign program. And we really look forward to hearing from you and hearing your comments. This is, uh, this is an exciting moment for us. We have a moment here where we can make changes to the MBTA's bus system and really make bold changes, bold improvements to make this network work better for our riders and everyone in the Metro Boston area. This system hasn't really been comprehensively reviewed as far as we can tell in decades, uh, if, if not longer. And this is an opportunity. This area has changed dramatically even over the past five years, never mind the past 25 years. People are living in different places, they're working in different places, they're going to different places. We wanna build a bus network that works for our population. And I should note that this is not just redesigning routes and optimizing routes. It's also about increasing the level of service. We plan to increase bus service by 25% across the total network and actually increase it by 70% on weekends. This is gonna provide hundreds of thousands of riders with access to high frequency service. And by high frequency service, we mean a bus stopping uh, every 15 minutes or, or less throughout the service day. And we'll actually be doubling the number of routes that have this level of service from 15 to 30. Now, to be clear, there's gonna be some changes and trade-offs uh, as we build this. We're building the service that's better. It's gonna be better. It's gonna be more equitable. It reflects the changing travel needs of this region. It's gonna be simpler and it's gonna be easier to understand. We're really excited about this. We're obviously open-minded. This is a draft plan. Part of the reason we're here is to get your feedback uh, and adapt this map uh, as, 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 as is possible, and then come back with a final plan later this year. So thank you again for joining us. Thanks to our wonderful bus network redesign team for running all these hearings, and we look forward to hearing from you. Thanks so much. Great. Thank you, General Manager. Uh, we want to go to the next slide. Um, so like I said, uh, I'm going to provide a quick overview of bus network redesign what we're doing, and then I'll hand it off to Rob Guptill, our Director of Service Planning, who will go into some of the details specific to the Metro West community. So to reinforce what the General Manager said, why are we doing what is bus network redesign? It's fundamentally that, as it says here, we believe the region has changed. People live in different places, are trying to get to different places, and therefore it's essential that the network changes as well. And this um, bus network redesign is our holistic plan to revise and update and improve the network to better reflect those changing needs. If you wanna to go to the next slide, please. So it's critical to note too, that network redesign is not being done in a vacuum. Uh, you might be hearing about other initiatives related to bus and know that we're trying to plan and coordinate them all together. So tonight we're talking about bus network redesign, 
but know there are also efforts underway that we coordinate with, I'll call it on bus priority, which is just the way to say bus lanes and queue jumps and transit signal priority, as well as an updated fleet and facility plan. So that's modernizing all of our bus facilities and transitioning to a battery electric fleet. And they're all coordinating together as well as additional initiatives to improve the passenger and customer experience. Next slide, please. Now, in order to be successful, and this is something we want to say up front, it's absolutely critical, and we know it's critical, to work with municipalities and the roadway owners. Um, we often say the cities own the roads, we run the buses on the roads, and we work together to make sure that communities, residents, workers have the best service possible. So in order for a bus network redesign to be successful, we know in addition to this map, we're gonna need effective transit priority on congested corridors. We're gonna need a transit priority again, that's bus lanes and, and other, other things. Um, we need new and expanded layover locations. Locations are where buses stop so operators can use the restrooms so we can make sure our buses on schedules. We'll need new bus shelters and accessible bus stops in new locations because we're gonna be running service in new areas and on new streets. And we'll also need new and upgraded garages to operate this service. And that's, that's in the long term. Uh, and in some cases, and we'll talk a little bit about implementation, there'll be some things we won't be able to change once we have the final map until we actually have some of that transit priority, like with Longwood Medical Area, just because it's so essential that we can move buses through congested areas so that we can make this high frequency service work for our riders. Next slide, please. Now we've been listening to, I was gonna say thousands of riders, our bus operators, um, and really been doing different forms of engagement since 2019. And even earlier, if folks remember early parts of the Better Bus Project back in 2018. There's four key things we've heard from riders and what we're trying to do with this map. The first is that this network is trying to get people where they want to go when they need it. So we hear a lot about service seven days a week uh, and our, our map tries to reflect that need for Saturday and Sunday service as well as service all day. We've heard that our riders want service that is simple to use and understand. So it's not going down one route in the morning and one route in the afternoon, but it's consistent and folks know how to use the system. We've heard that our riders want fast and frequent and reliable service. So it's good and competitive. And that it also serves the people who need it most. Um, and this really was driving a lot of the principles in how we designed this draft map. Next slide, please. So there are five key things that this map is trying to do. The first is that we're prioritizing the needs of those who depend on buses and need frequent and reliable service. The second is we're trying to run more frequent service in busy neighborhoods. The third is we're running more all day service. The fourth, is new connections to more places, including non-downtown centers. Um, and this is something we heard, especially those crosstown connections, and especially in a post-pandemic world, recognizing that not designing our system, not for the nine to five commuters downtown, but everyone in their everyday work, travel, play. And then five, crucially, a network that is simpler and easier to use. Next slide, please. Now, as the general manager said, we're really excited about this map for a number of reasons, uh, especially the benefits laid out here. The first is that we're, this is a commitment to increase bus service by 25% over the next five years, which is an expansion, uh, I think really unheard of in the area. And 70% of that would be um, increasing service on the weekends. Again, Saturday and Sunday service where we know there's a lot of demand. And this puts nearly 300,000 more, 275, 300,000 more residents near high frequency service. And high frequency service is defined as service that's coming every 15 minutes or better, seven days a week for up to 20 hours a day. Next slide, please. 
And in order to do this, that, this is what it looks like. And again, this is a draft map. It's going to change based on the feedback we hear tonight and all the feedback we've heard through this public engagement. On the left-hand side, you can see what our old network was and the blue calls out our high frequency corridors. Again, where we're running that service of 15 minutes or better. And the new network on the right there, you can see um, we're proposing going from 15 to 30 high frequency corridors and really trying to connect based on where we've seen the demand and where people want to go. Next slide, please. And finally, with this, um, we talked about it. It's the, not only are, it's about the frequency service, but it's that it's connecting people to those critical locations, right? So connecting nearly 200,000, more than 200,000 riders to Longwood Medical Area, connecting 180,000 um, residents in the Boston area to the South Boston waterfronts. 50,000 to Back Bay and 58,000 to Kendall Square. And all these are sort of job places or uh, clusters of jobs that we know people wanna to get to or um, and trying to enable more of our, our re local residents and local workers to be, have access to them through competitive service. Next slide, please. And I'm now gonna hand it over to Rob Guptill who will talk through the specific changes for the Metro West region. Thank you, Rob. Thank you, Kat. Good evening, everyone. My name is Robert Guptel. I am the Director of Service Planning at the MBTA, and I'm very pleased to be with you here tonight. I am here to talk through some of the details of the changes to routes, and certainly there will be opportunity in the breakout sessions that follow this to get into even more detail. So please, compile your questions and we'll be happy to dive into them during the breakout sessions. I'm gonna start in Dedham and work my way northward. So in Dedham, we have several new routes, new service that would be serving Dedham that is not there today. Route 36, uh, which today terminates at Charles River Loop and serves the VA hospital. Uh, we, would ex we are proposing to extend Route 36 down VFW Parkway all the way to Dedham Mall and terminate at Dedham Mall. Route 35 would continue as it does today uh, to serve Dedham Mall. And the hope with these two routes is that we could coordinate them such that when they get into West Roxbury uh, along Spring Street and Center Street, they could be coordinated to provide high frequency service between West Roxbury and Forest Hills. But they would also provide high frequency service from Dedham Mall into Forest Hills, given that both routes would terminate at Dedham Mall and start from Dedham Mall. Routes that come down Washington Street, we have the 34, which uh, would be proposed to extend to Legacy Place in Dedham. Uh, the proposal would be actually to have the 34 serve Providence Highway on the way to Legacy Place and provide new connections along Providence Highway that are not available today. The 34E would also be proposed to serve Legacy Place. The 34E would stay on Washington Street through Dedham's uh, south of Dedham Square, and then cut over to Legacy Place via Elm Street. Route 24 is a new service along High Street in Dedham. Uh, this would be a new connection between Dedham Mall, Dedham Center, via High Street, uh, into uh, Hyde Park and the Fairmount neighborhood uh, via River Street and all going all the way to Mattapan and then connecting to Ashmont Station. And this would be a new connection that does not exist today. Route 40 would also be extended into Dedham via, into, uh, via High Street. Route 40 would terminate uh, at Wolcott Square, uh, provide a connection from High Street into Wolcott Square. Um, that's Dedham. Um, I'll move north to Needham now. Um, 
Needham is served by Route 59 today, and we propose to continue serving it by Route 59. However, the change would be that uh, Route 59 today uh, operates weekdays, Saturdays, and Sundays, but only to about seven o'clock at night or so. Under this proposal, we would expand this span of service for Route 59 to 10 p.m. Uh, weekdays, Saturday, and Sunday. And the frequency would improve during the peak periods to every 30 minutes or better. Um, let's move to the next slide, please. And here we'll talk about Newton. I'll stay on Route 59 uh, since that was what I just talked about. Uh, the change for Route 59, again, in terms of service, is that its span of service would increase. Um, in terms of routing in, Nita, in, in Newton, uh, we are proposing to have Route 59 consistently stay on Needham Street. Uh, today, during the peak periods, uh, half the service is on Needham Street. But as one of the principles that Kat mentioned, we want to create more simplified service that does more consistent, that has greater consistency. And keeping the service where there is higher demand on Needham Street will simplify the service and provide a higher level of frequency to Needham Street. Route 59 then continues to Watertown Square the way that it does today. Route 52, uh, this is a route that today only operates on weekdays, but under bus network redesign, service would be on weekdays, Saturdays, and Sundays. Again, going all the way from 6 a.m. to 10 p.m. All, on all of those days. Um, Route 52, the routing would, would largely stay the same in Newton um, in that it serves Watertown Square um, via Newton Center. Um, the southern portion of Route 52 would change. We would have it serve uh, LaGrange Street when it enters uh, West Roxbury. This would replace Route 37 in West Roxbury and Route 52 would terminate at Charles River Loop, but providing connections to routes 35 and 30, uh, to, excuse me, connections to Route 36 along Spring Street. Uh, Elsewhere in Newton, we have Route 60. This would be a new connection between Chestnut Hill Mall and Newton Center uh, that does not exist today with new service. Uh, this would be medium frequency service that would be 30 minutes or better from 6 a.m. to 10 p.m. and service operating up to 1 a.m. and starting as early as 5 a.m. Moving northward, um, we have Route 54, looking at Riverside. Route 54 is a new route that we are proposing that would serve Riverside, connect to Waltham Center, and then take the routing of the 554 today over to Waverly, and then continue from Waverly into Belmont Square, and then continue from Belmont Square into Arlington to provide a circumferential connection along all of those communities. This would be a medium frequency route that again would op operate 30 minutes or better from 6 a.m. to 10 p.m. Other routes that are serving uh, Riverside, the 53 would be almost an extension of the 553 in that the 553 terminates today in Brand and Brandeis and Roberts. We would extend this route to provide that direct connection to Riverside. Now, I just wanna talk about uh, the service along Washington Street and uh, what is today, um, the 553, 554, 556, and 558. As you can see, those routes are not part of this map. We have routes like the 54 and the 53. Uh, the 61 is another route. This would be a route that uh, serves North Waltham today, but we would extend it uh, via Waltham Center 
down High Street and Waltham Street to connect to Washington Street and provide um, all day connections, uh, not just peak connections, but all day connections. Again, weekdays, Saturdays, and Sundays uh, along Washington Street to Watertown Square. Um, but the 553, 554, 556, and 558, those are not called for uh, in this route, in, in, this, in this map. Um, express service is limited uh, in Newton to three routes. This would be the 505 from Waltham Center that comes down Moody Street, serves West Newton, and then jumps um, along Washington Street to serve um, Newton uh, to go in, inbound to downtown Boston, serving Copley on the way. Routes 501 and 504 are also express bus routes that we have today. Uh, those would continue to operate uh, during the peak periods. Uh, the 504 from Watertown Yard, the 501 from Brighton Center. They would get on the pike and get off at Copley and then terminate in the downtown financial district. Uh, let's go to the next slide, please. In Waltham, I've mentioned a couple of these routes already, um, but I'll mention them again. Route 61 serves North Waltham and provides that connection down into Newton and all the way to Watertown uh, via High Street and Waltham Street. Uh, Route 54 provides this circumferential connection, uh, connecting Waltham to Newton and Riverside to the south and connecting Waltham to, to, uh, to Waverly and Belmont and Arlington to the east. Um, and Route 53 provides the connection from Brandeis, Roberts and that neighborhood to Riverside that does not exist today. In terms of high frequency routes, uh, the route T70 is proposed to be promoted to be high frequency, which would mean 15 minutes or better all day, every day from 5 a.m. to 1 a.m. And you can see that there is a um, almost extension of the 70 between Waltham Center and Cedarwood, uh, excuse me, and, and um, uh, um, the, the mall uh, just off of, of Main Street. Um, there is no service to Cedarwood under this proposal, uh, but we would find some way to uh, extend the 70 or provide a connection uh, from that high frequency service two points west. All right, I think I talked through everything. I think we can go on to the next slide and I can hand it back to Kat. Thank you, Rob. Um, thank you for going through that. And again, we'll be going to breakout shortly, but I did just want to reiterate, this is a draft map. So really looking forward to everyone's feedback tonight. We're gonna do a lot of listening, happy to answer questions. And again, we're gonna take all this feedback in. Um, however, before I was remiss earlier, before I talk through timeline, we actually like to do a poll at each of our sessions just to get a sense of who's in the room. Uh, so Reagan, can I ask you to launch that poll? So our question is, do you ride the bus regularly at least once a month? Give it a couple more seconds as people answer. All right, Reagan, I think you are good to close the poll and share the results. So it seems like we have a good mix with about uh, just over 50% of uh, the attendees tonight who don't ride the bus regularly at least once a month and just under 50% who do. So that's really helpful. And I think as we go through and, and give that feedback, um, when you're in the breakout sessions, having that is also really, really helpful. So thank you. So I will now just wrap up the presentation portion and we can get right over to the, to the breakouts. Um, so as I was saying, 
Uh, so we're currently, if you smack dab in the middle of this map, uh, we are currently in the process of sharing the proposal for the new bus network and doing that outreach phase two, which is the public comments. We're looking to go with, uh, at the end of the summer, we'll wrap up public comments and go through a process of taking in all those comments uh, and interpreting them, reviewing them and processing them to then create a final map. Uh, and then we will go to, um, we'll be looking then for our board to vote on the, the final map at some point this fall, early winter. And then we'd be looking to start implementation no sooner than summer of, of 2023, spring, summer 2023. Now, as I said earlier, implementation is gonna be phased over five years and the exact specifics of implementation will vary on what the final map looks like, um, uh, the structure, availability of bus priority and the availability to hire bus operators and other key staff. But that's currently that five-year implementation timeline. That's currently our goal and what we're working towards. So if we go to the next slide, please. Um, I mentioned this earlier too, but just a reminder that this is, uh, we've been trying to get as much feedback as possible all the way through. So there have been surveys, outreach, um, working with our advocates, municipalities, other roadway owners. But again, uh, we will take all the feedback tonight. And then if we go to the next slide, please. There are also additional ways to provide feedback. So the upcoming community meetings, uh, in person and a virtual hearing, as well as more uh, out in the open opportunities to engage with our outreach team, uh, as well as learn more about bus network redesign. And this is also how we try to get our bus riders who are using the system as well and make sure that they're aware uh, of the proposed changes. Next slide, please. And then finally, recognizing that may, everyone may not stay through the night, just know there's lots of ways that you can give feedback. Of course, there's tonight and comments and questions, but also uh, you can provide feedback online through an online survey at mbta.com slash BNRD feedback. You can attend more events. You can email us at the better bus project at mbta.com, mail written comments, and also leave us a voicemail. There's also multiple ways to stay informed, both on bus network redesign and all the great projects that are going on for the Better Bus Program. Uh, and the best place to do that is go to mbta.com slash BNRD. Uh, and like I said, really looking forward to all the feedback. Um, and again, we'll show this slide again at the end, uh, but really we're gonna, we'll, we're in every single breakout group we have tonight, we have note takers. We have tons of note takers right now. So really everything that gets provided in comments or questions, we know that we are capturing that and we will be using that in a review process. So with that, I will pass it back to Reagan. Thank you, Kat. Next slide, please. Great, so as I mentioned earlier, we are gonna have some small group discussions to get your feedback and ideas about the draft map. I know that some of you pose some questions in the chat, but we do encourage you to ask them in your sessions. Um, I will, I do want to know someone did ask a question about the slides and the availability of the maps. And I will say that all the meetings, um, the recordings are posted um, a few days after each meeting, but all of the maps that Rob shown are available on the website that by neighborhood, you can um, download them in up to nine languages. So I do want to make sure that you had that information. So there are no differences in content between the rooms with the exception of the non-English language breakout room. And as a reminder, if you prefer a non-English breakout room and did not indicate that preference earlier, please message us in the chat. Next slide. So, um, each breakout room will have a group leader who will facilitate the discussion. Um, I have some of the questions listed here right now, but that will be reviewed in your session. Um, the conversation is going to focus on your feedback on the draft network map. Um, we are going to uh, reconvene here, I think it's 715. So I think you're going to have well over half an hour in each room. So time for some great discussion. And then we're going to discuss next steps for the project. We will take comments and questions from elected officials and then comments um, that 
maybe if there were comments and questions you didn't have time to ask in the breakout, we'll wrap some of those up before we adjourn. Um, next slide, Terry. So I think this says what I just said on this slide. And um, Amanda, can you, oh, Terry, can you stop the screen share? And Amanda, can you pause the recording? So welcome back, everybody. Um, thank you so much for participating in these discussions. Um, we really appreciate your feedback and we'll take everything we heard tonight into consideration. Um, we are now going to move into the question and answer section. Next slide. Great. So first I'm gonna walk through the instructions um, and I will ask everyone to hold your comments and questions or raising hands until I finish the instructions. Then we are gonna ask elected officials to speak and then open the meeting up for other questions. So the instructions. If you would like to share a comment or ask a question, please use the chat feature at the bottom of your screen to submit your typed question or comment. You will submit those questions to ask a question. We will alternate when possible between reading questions and comments already submitted and recognizing those who want to pose a question verbally. Please be brief so we can hear from as many people as possible. People who wish to share a question or comment verbally can press the raise hand button. For those of you joining on the phone, you can raise your hand um, by, uh, sorry, uh, by pressing star and then the number nine, star nine. All attendees who speak Spanish, please raise your hand to provide your comments and questions verbally for the interpreters to hear and repeat your comments. When we recognize your name, you will be unmuted and you may speak. After you share your comment, we will lower your hand and you will then be returned to the muted state. So before we open the comments and questions segment to the public, we would like to invite any elected officials in attendance or their staff to ask questions or make comments. Please use the raised hand feature so we can recognize and unmute you now. And while I wait for that, I'm gonna ask Terry, can you go to the next slide, Terry? This way that all the feedback is listed on screen while we do this. All right, so I see Mayor Fuller has her hand raised. Um, Amanda, can you unmute the mayor, please? Mayor, are you able to? You should be able to unmute yourself. Okay. Excellent. Um, hey folks, uh, thank you, Reagan, Kat, Robert, the whole MBTA team. Um, we had a great group discussion uh, with a bunch of folks from Newton, but let me just uh, reiterate a few of the points that I made. Um, unfortunately, the MBTA bus network redesign um, is not better for the people who live and work in the city of Newton. As it's proposed uh, in this draft, the changes are extremely concerning and will have a dramatic, dramatic negative effect on residents here who depend on these buses to go into and out of Boston in particular. Uh, we fear that these cuts will actually force people out of public transportation and into cars, just as a lot of construction projects get underway. Um, I want to highlight two things in particular, and I do want to say a thank you as well. Historically, Newton has been pretty well served by the express buses that make up for our infrequent commuter rail access into and out of Boston. Um, and as part of the original forging ahead process, four express bus routes now terminate at Newton Corner, which is a really inhospitable area for pedestrians. And it's there that riders have to get out of the bus, walk to another bus as they transfer onto a different express bus if they wanna to continue to Boston or are coming from Boston 
to another location in Newton or Aurora points west. If they're going to Waltham, same problem. Uh, we had thought these changes were originally going to be temporary because of the pandemic, but now um, they're actually labeled as the current service. And what's happened is the these more recent newly proposed cuts go even further. We, I also want to highlight that service is proposed to be eliminated along the Adams and Chapel Street corridor in Nonantum and several other areas where transit dependent residents live. This is actually completely counter to what you're trying to do with the better bus routes. Um, so I, our most important request is in the next draft to immediately return our express bus service to how it had been operated pre-pandemic. Um, please know we're, we do applaud the Route 53, the Route 60 um, changes. Uh, they have a lot of promise and we're grateful that you have improved service frequencies on a number of routes. But in closing, as the mayor of Newton, instead of reducing a bus system that working people rely on in this draft plan, work with us um, to build a robust system, restore our pre-pandemic bus express network. Thank you, and a final thank you. We're working with the MBTA very closely on improving our commuter rail stations, which will allow frequent and accessible service. Once that work is done, we can reimagine the bus network, but right now is not the time to cut. Again, thank you for allowing us to comment. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I, we appreciate your thoughtful comments um, and for your participation tonight. Um, I'm going to, uh, I see Senator Cream is here. Amanda, can you unmute the Senator, please? Thank you. Thank you for giving me uh, and my constituents the opportunity to share our feedback on the MBTA's proposed bus network redesign. Although I'm here tonight to share my serious concerns about the redesign's impact on Newton and to request that it be amended accordingly, I believe the proposal does on the whole strengthen the MBTA's bus service and I'm grateful for the hard work that went into developing it. However, the devil's in the details. And there are a few areas in Newton which I believe the redesigned bus network comes up short. My biggest concern is that the proposed redesign decimates Newton's express bus service. You heard something about that from the mayor. Leaving residents with few good options for commuting into downtown Boston. The MBTA has proposed consolidating several express bus routes serving Newton into one route, the new 505. The new 505 would no longer run through Auburndale and it would offer a much longer trip making multiple stops between West Newton and Newton Corner before running express to Copper Square and then to downtown. The proposal will also reduce service levels so that 505 only runs during peak hours. Given the highly irregular commuter rail service at Newton's three stations on the Framingham Worcester line, the proposed reduction in express bus service would leave many Newton residents without a reliable transit option. You understand that because the commuter rail in those stations are not handicap access, they don't run all the time. So that option is not available. Reduced service would be inconsistent with the state's goals for housing and climate change. The state and our legislature has encouraged cities and towns to address the region's housing shortage by promoting transit-oriented development. And Newton has responded 
by facilitating substantial development along the Washington Street Corridor. Reducing transit service in that area will undercut the rationale for these projects. And I repeat that, the legislature, the governor, we all put claimed that housing was important and that the best place to put it is transit-oriented housing. And now we're gonna take the transit away. The Newton uh, inadequate transit service will also lead more Newton residents to drive, which will amplify con congestion problems and increase greenhouse gas emission in the transportation corridor. To reach our climate goals, which the legislature voted and the governor wanted, we should be taking the exact opposite approach, enhancing transit service so that a re residents elect not to drive. I don't know how many people have driven down Washington Street. The developments are enormous and they continue as we speak. I think that nobody knew that when they decided to make these decisions. So I would respectfully request that the MBTA restore express bus service in Newton to pandemic service, pre-pandemic service levels when multiple express buses traveled directly from Newton to Boston. We know that many people are now back at work. At the very least, Newton deserves express bus service that runs throughout the day and on weekends to make up for irregular commuter rail service. On a related note, I ask that all inbound and outbound buses serving Newton Corner continue to make stops on both the north and the south side of the traffic circle. Newton Corner is a dangerous environment for pedestrians. You can barely walk nor bike there. And although making two stops will slightly lengthen trips, it is necessary to ensure that residents can commute safely. Finally, I would like to make an important request about route, bus route 52, which provides service to several important schools and institutions that serve my constituents, including the Carroll Center for the Blind. That's an, that is a service provided in Newton that people all over the state come to. Catholic Memorial, Newton Country Day School, and many more are serviced by Route 52 bus. Many residents rely on that 52 bus to make it to school in the morning. And when schedules aren't aligned with the start of, start of school day, our buses routinely run late, those students are forced to miss class time. I ask that when you set the schedule for the 52 bus, you consult with the schools along the route, ensure that students are able to get to the first class of the day on time, even if the bus is running 10 or 15 minutes late. Again, I thank you for providing me and my constituents the opportunity to testify tonight. I urge you to come to Newton, look at the Carroll Center, look at the development. I think if you do that, you will feel much differently about this proposal. I hope you will amend your proposal and ensure that Newton residents have access to convenient, reliable express bus service that offers a quick connection to downtown Boston. Again, thank you so much for taking me out of turn and allowing me to speak. Thank you, Senator Cream. Appreciate your comments and also your participation tonight. I can see there are uh, several more uh, elected officials with their hands raised right now. Kat, um, are you okay if we go beyond 7.30 tonight so yep. we can hear all the testimony? Yeah, how are we translators for, yeah. Yeah, I think we have folks uh, uh, till 7.45, um, so we'll keep going. Um, so I think I'm going to turn to Representative Stanley. Uh, Amanda, can you unmute Representative Stanley? Hi, can you hear me? Yes, we can. All right, thank you very much. I'll, I'll be brief. I made <clears throat> comments during the uh, breakout session. and. Um, you know, I, I want to reiterate the positives that were made um, in, in uh, all the work that you did, more frequent bus service um, from Waltham to downtown and to Cambridge and to Riverside is tremendous. 
Um, the, the unfortunate fact is it comes at the expense of uh, some of the other bus routes within the city of Waltham and connecting Waltham to um, our neighbors, uh, namely West Newton and Newton Corner. Um, uh, the general point that I want to make, and I believe you know, Senator Cream made a lot of great points. I'm not going to reiterate them. You know, much, much of those can be applied to Waltham, but. It's been my feeling for some time that Waltham needs to be treated more like um, an urban uh, part of Boston. We are closer to downtown Boston than some parts of the city of Boston. We have 65,000 people here and more than that travel to Waltham to work. Another couple of hundred thousand plus travel through Waltham along 128. And when there's an accident there, we feel it throughout our community. So uh, we're, ha we're happy about the positive changes and just want to note that we have large swaths of Waltham that uh, do not have any direct bus service, namely the, the Cedarwood area will be taken away. North Waltham, it's only there in part with this plan. Should I'm go, done. Should go no, from West. I'm done. Should go from west to east, and um, and also the Lexington Street corridor should um, go all the way up to Depeller Road, and I'll end there. Thank you. Thank you very much. Appreciate your comments as well tonight. Um, James McDonald, Amanda, can you and me, James? Good evening, thanks very much. Uh, Jim McDonald, uh, chair of the Dedham Select Board. Uh, we did see, uh, so first of all, thank again for, uh, for doing this. I uh, did see some, you know, some good extensions on, on, on some of the lines. Uh, do have some concerns uh, with, uh, with an additional route that will go on High Street and, and, and through Dedham Square. Um, you know, I think that uh, I, was, I, I think Kate, Kat gave me a uh, an email that we're going to reach out to uh, for the for the town of Dedham and sort of have a little more in depth uh, discussion. You know, I know traffic. You know, bus is going up to Legacy Place and other others will have a positive uh, effect, but there is concerns uh, with the with the two I previously mentioned. I know you got a lot, so that's as brief as I can be. Thanks very much for your time. Thank you for your comments as well. Um, I see Councillor Darcy. Uh, Amanda, can you unmute him, please? Thank you very much, uh, George Darcy, uh, Waltham City Councillor. Very simply, I, I would like the MBTA to consider extending the existing bus 73 from Waverly Square in Belmont along Trapella Road into North Waltham, where there currently is no public transportation in that section. North Waltham is underserved in regards to public transportation. Um, and there are very important neighborhoods and sites and institutions along that route. I'll be very brief. The Fernald site, the Beaver Brook Reservation, the oldest public park in the United States, the National Archives of Boston, Gann Academy High School, Bentley University dorms, Meadow Green Nursing Facility, Wellington Crossing condominiums, Our Lady's Church in eight neighborhoods with thousands of homes. And then when you get to Lexington and Trapella Road intersection, there's approximately 5,000 housing units within a half of a mile, including homes, condos, apartments, and two 40Bs, one in Waltham, one in Lexington. Um, again, thank you very much for hosting this section, and I look forward to working with you. Thank you very much. Um, I thought we had another city councilor with their hand raised, but I don't see them anymore. Oh, there, there she is. Uh, Amanda, can you unmute councilor Bradley MacArthur? Apologies, I did get disconnected. Thank you. Uh, and I'll be brief because I know we've had several folks from uh, Waltham already speak and I want to thank uh, Representative Stanley and Councillor Darcy for being here. And I just want to extend 
a huge thank you to the MBTA team um, for not only doing these sessions, but coming to our city council meetings. I think when we initially proposed um, what George and uh, Rep Stanley had mentioned, this 73 um, extension and increasing service in North Waltham, there was a lot of um, sort of pushback and doubt that the MBTA, MBTA would listen and you have done more than that. So I just wanna say thank you. I also want to say thank you to Jeff Bennett from the 128 Business Council for echoing our concerns about the traffic and need for service in North Waltham. I mentioned in our meeting that we are getting pharmaceutical companies' campuses. We're getting biotech campuses. So there's going to be a lot of people working there. And then to what George Darcy said, there are a lot of people already living in that Lexington and Trapello stretch uh, that needs service. And Jeff mentioned connecting service on Lexington Street. Those are some of our um, most vulnerable population living in Waltham that also require service. So thank you, thank you uh, to the MBTA team. I have to unmute myself. Thank you very much for your comments. Um, I am not seeing any written comments uh, from folks. Um, I do want to open it up if anyone, we probably have time for maybe like one or maybe two verbal comments, although I know um, the discussions in the breakout sessions may have answered your comments already. Uh, I do see a hand raised. Um, Amanda, can you unmute Rachel, please? Hi, uh, I live in Waltham uh, off of Trapello Road and I did voice this in the breakout, but I just want to second the motion that Trapello Road in Waltham really needs regular bus service. Uh, I walk about two miles to Waverly Square regularly and I have for most of my life. <laughs> so uh, yeah, everyone's already said everything that needs to be said. Uh, the National Archives on Trapello Road, you know, it would be great if now that the 73 is not connected to the overhead line, if it could continue down Trapello Road and connect us with the Lexington Street buses and uh, and the commuter rail and the 73, you know, the hub in Waverly Square. So thank you all so much. Thank you to all the Waltham City Councilors and Representatives. And I saw Mayor McCarthy in there as well. So thank you so much. Thank you. So I actually think that probably is our final question and comment for the night, Kat. Um, I don't know if um, you would like to give us some final remarks. So I think I'll just close with a, a thank you for everyone for being here. Thank you for everyone providing your comments, whether written in the breakouts right now. Um, this is, uh, we're at the T are incredibly excited about this. This is, but this is our draft map. And tonight you have helped us make it a better map. Um, so we were gonna take this back along with all the other comments we received earlier this year. And then all the comments we're receiving, I wanna say through the end of July. Uh, and then we hope to come back with, uh, with a final map based on all those comments. We can't promise to meet everything, but we'll do our best to understand and think about thematically what this means and how to create a, a better network for, for everyone. So thank you everyone for taking the time. And thank you also to all the MBTA staff for, uh, for spending the evenings out here. So thanks all.